crushed a little bit at the end there. <laughs> Thank you for joining me and welcome to my basement here in beautiful Northfield. My name is Jeremy Kunkel and I am the PAN Program Coordinator for Chops Incorporated. I'm also the founder of the Panhandler Steel Drum Band, the Tin Cups Steel Drum Band, and the director and founder of the PAN Outreach Program, and we'll talk a little bit more about those later. Today, we're going to spend some time exploring the PAN instrument uh, in its various aspects, its history, how to play it, and the role it plays in an ensemble. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. We're going to start with a little PowerPoint today and talk about some steel band history and some general pan pedagogy. Those are some things that you need to consider when you're playing a steel drum instrument, as well as what makes up the instrument themselves, the role they play in an ensemble, and where some of the notes are and how to play them. And then we'll talk about some additional resources, some area ensembles that you can join, some online resources if you'd like to explore further, and where you might actually pick up a pan of your own. Now if you look up here, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but up at the top of the screen, that's Florida. You got Cuba and Haiti, Mexico over here. And if you keep going down the Caribbean islands, past St. Lucia and Grenada, right before you get to South America, off the coast of Venezuela, are two little islands called Trinidad and Tobago. And Trinidad is shaped like a little boot. In 1498, Christopher Columbus landed on Trinidad, uh, which he named for the Holy Trinity, and found a land quietly inhabited by the Arawak and Carib Indians. It was nearly a century later that Europeans began to settle Trinidad. You can see the capital here in the port of Spain, the Spanish settlement of San Jose de Aruma, which is located near the capital, the port of Spain, was the first of the island's European villages but was summarily invaded and destroyed by England's Sir Walter Raleigh in 1595. Trinidad remained under Spanish control until it was eventually seized by the British in 1797, and as sugar plantations developed around the island, uh, thousands of African slaves were brought to the island as laborers. When Britain abolished saved slavery, uh, the plantation owners looked to India, China, China and uh, the Middle East for laborers and indentured servants, uh, bringing to Trinidad thousands of different cultures. And it's the mishmash of those cultures that kind of uh, resulted in the founding of the music Calypso. Um, steel pans were created on the Caribbean island of Trinidad in the 1930s, but the steel pan history can be traced all the way back to the enslaved Africans who were brought to the islands during the 1700s. You can see here them cutting sugarcane, uh, much like the United States, um, only instead of tobacco and cotton, like in the south of the United States, uh, they were farming sugarcane on Trinidad. Um, they carried with them elements of their African culture, including the playing of hand drums, and this is an African hand drum, one of the oldest found to date. Uh, these drums became the main percussion instruments in the annual Trinidadian Carnival festivities. Um, and in 1877, the ruling British government banned the playing of drums in an effort to suppress aspects of the carnival, which were considered offensive. So bamboo stamping tubes were used to replace those hand drums, and they produced sounds comparable to the hand drum when they were pounded on the ground. These tubes uh, were played in ensembles called Tambu Bamboo Bands. In Trinidad. Eventually, non-traditional instruments like scrap metal and metal containers and graters and dustbins were also used in those tambu bamboo bands. However, by the 1930s, these metal instruments pretty much dominated the bands, and the bamboo tubes were eventually abandoned and replaced by the metal instruments. Um, and these early metal pan bands were a rustic combination of a wide variety of metallic containers and kitchen utensils which were struck with open hands and fists and sticks, uh, the metal pan players discovered that the raised areas of those metal containers made a different sound to the areas that were flat. Through experimentation and trial and error, and uh, a little bit of ingenuity on the part of numerous pan innovators, the metal pan bands evolved into the steel pan family of instruments. As the pan maker's knowledge and technique improved, so did the sound of the instrument. Uh, the steel pan is now the national instrument of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and a source of great national pride for its citizens. 
Steelpan and its innovators are now held in very high regard by persons of all levels of society in Trinidad and Tobago. And as a part of the annual conver uh, excuse me, as a part of the annual carnival celebration in Trinidad and Tobago, a competition called Panorama is held. And Panorama in Trinidad is the largest pan competition in the world, showcasing nearly 100 bands in different categories, with as many as 120 players in the largest bands. Now, if you want to play a steel drum instrument, there's a certain considerations you have to take into account. First of all, the notes aren't linear. They're not lined up like a piano where it goes C, D, E, F, G. The notes on this instrument are actually lined up around a circle in a circle of fifths, um, and every pan instrument has a slightly different layout. The other thing you have to think about is how to best create a quality sound. Um, you don't hold your mallets like a normal drumstick, uh, German grip or whatever. You actually take them more like a French grip, um, similar to maybe some timpani techniques, where you only take the mallet to the back of the middle finger and uh, use a wrist flick or a piston stroke so that when you hit the instrument you can pull the mallet off immediately so that the note rings. Obviously if we let the mallet head sit on the instrument it deadens the note quite a bit. Okay? Um, because we're playing in like a bowl uh, sometimes we won't actually play the note straight up and down like you normally would a snare drum or a marimba Sometimes we have to use what's called a flick stroke, where we actually turn our hand like a doorknob so that we can hit notes on the side of the instrument, okay? It's very important to stay flexible and bend your knees so that you can get to notes that are sometimes difficult to reach. Now, if you want to play a note that's on the side of the instrument, you may have to turn your hand in that flick motion, or notes that are far away uh, are kind of difficult to reach, you may have to bend your knees and get your hands all the way inside the pan to hit those with as much rubber on the tip of the mallet as possible. Okay, This instrument that we're playing right now is called a lead pan or a tenor pan and it serves as our soprano voice or most often the melody. It has the highest range of the instruments that we use and uh, it starts at middle C. Middle C is the lowest note on this instrument. And the notes are arranged in a circle of fifths. So right next to the C is a G, and then a D, which is your order of sharps going to the right. To the left is the F, the B flat, and your order of flats going this way. So if you were looking at a key signature, uh, the key of C would obviously have no sharps or flats. The key of F would have one flat, that's one note to the left. The key of B flat would have two flats. Same goes for the order of sharps going this way. The cool thing about the lead pan is if you want to play in the key of C, you draw a line through half of the pan, and all of those notes on this side of the pan are in the key of C. If you take that line, and move it one click clockwise, now all of these notes are in the key of F. You'll have to excuse my major scale there. Um, and so forth. So it's kind of cool uh, because you can transport or transpose songs relatively easily once you get the understanding of how the notes lay and where the keys fall uh, for major and minor keys. Okay, um, <clears throat> This pan is actually marked up with some colors because for our outreach program we use colors to help teach individuals and students where the notes are. So if you think of the acronym Roy G. Biv as if you were looking at a rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, we've marked the notes with those colors um, and that acronym, when played in succession, makes a C major scale. So you play red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and then the octaves for all of those notes are in the inside ring. This instrument in 
total has two and a third octaves. So it has a full octave, another full octave on the inside, and then five half steps or up to uh, E in the upper register. Now the upper register, you really have to hit those hard to get them to sound. They're used more for special effects than anything uh, or doubling other parts in lower registers just because they're so hard to make sound on, on some instruments. So that's just a little introduction to the lead pan. Um, and what I'd like to do is record just a short excerpt of a song called Trinidad Blue Basin with a metronome and later on I'm going to put all four parts together so that you can hear each individual instrument's role and then what they sound like together as an ensemble. So let me put my headphones on here. Always important to play with the Met, especially when you're trying to line things up with video. Let's see how many takes it takes to make this sound good. Over here. Um, so 
some technical things that you kind of have to take into consideration when playing the double seconds. So that's our alto instrument. The next instrument in our ensemble, ensemble <laughs> is the cello instrument. And the cellos are three drums put upright for convenience of reach. Um, and this also has two and a third octaves similar to the uh, seconds and the lead pan. However, uh, the mallets and heads of the mallets are a little bit bigger because we're playing a much larger note that are very resonant. So we want a softer mallet. And because these mallets are so long, sometimes I'll keep the backs of the mallets behind my ring finger instead of the middle finger, depending on how difficult of a passage it is. Uh, with all the weight in front, if you're moving around really fast, it's easy for the mallets to kind of get away from you. So keeping a better grip on these mallets is a little bit important. These notes are laid out in a diminished seventh chord or um, minor thirds, if you will. Every note is three half steps apart. So. Trinidad Blue Basin. Um, hopefully I can remember this one too. <clears throat> and you can hear the difference and kind of what this instrument sounds like. <laughs> Sharps is one sharp G, 
two sharps D, three sharps A. Uh, if you go flats, one flat is F, two flat is B flat. So you can see how it kind of mirrors um, the lead pan, only over six drums. So I'm going to try and play the Trinidad Blue Basin song on bass uh, so you can hear kind of how that part works and then we'll see if we can't put all four parts together. start playing more intricate parts it's almost as if you're dancing um, behind the steel drum very fun instrument to play so let's see if we can put all four of those parts together So that doesn't look too hard, does it? Let's say that uh, you want to buy a pan of your own. Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to find a reputable builder. And there are builders in the United States and there are builders in Trinidad. You may be lucky and find a decent instrument on eBay, but more than likely you're going to find something that's less than what you're hoping for, for more money than you'd like to spend. Um, Trinidad builders are generally cheaper than the United States builders, um, but you also get what you pay for. You can expect to spend anywhere between $600 to as much as $10,000 for some of the highest quality instruments. Uh, and then you have to take into consideration stands, cases, mallets, uh, those kinds of things. But one of the most tedious parts about playing steel drum is the waiting period. There are a lot of builders that have waiting lists a mile long. Our current builder, um, the person who's built all of the Panhandler steel drums, is Steve Laurie, and Steve Laurie can be found at Pantuner.com. And Pantuner.com makes some pretty amazing instruments, um, but if you order one today, you'll probably get it somewhere in the neighborhood of about 18 months from now. Uh, they take a long time to build, and the waiting list is quite extensive for people who make really, really nice instruments like Steve does. Um, the best builders are obviously in high demand. What we offer, um, the Panhandler Steel Drum Band is an auditioned group for experienced players, um, but new players can try tin cups. That doesn't mean um, they're any less uh, fun or anything like that. It's just for players that haven't had an opportunity to play steel drum before. Um, the tin cups group is primarily on a parade float, and that way you can learn one or two songs um, do your parade and throughout the summer learn up to seven or eight songs and then play with the panhandlers in a couple joint concerts towards the end of the summer. The panhandlers um, generally plays larger venues, is a slightly larger group, and plays about two hours worth of repertoire. Um, you can see more at pan-handlers.org. Uh, you can fill out a book, uh, fill out a uh, form and on the contact us page if you're interested in checking that out. We also offer a group, uh, uh, another program called Educational Outreach or PAN Outreach, which is at panoutreach.org. All of these programs are absolutely free to the participant. We don't charge anything for any of this stuff. Um, the PAN Outreach program is 
a program designed to go into schools and spend three to six to nine weeks uh, teaching students about pan and how to play and being a part of the ensemble and those kind of things. Um, you can go to our staff page to check out who's involved and um, also get in touch with me uh, as I'm on there. There you go. Uh, as well as Matt Clark, Chris Belich. Um, we're very fortunate to have um, some good staff members helping us out. Also on that app is the Pan uh, Practice app. Um, to sign in, you go to panoutreach.org and then the username is all lowercase student and the password is the number one. Don't spell one, it's just the number one. Student one. Real simple to remember. And once you get into that app, you can pull up different instruments. It's obviously more fun on an iPad because it's got a touch screen. But you can play your own virtual instrument. You can also turn off the note labels, turn off the colors, turn off the steel drum itself and the colors and the note labels, etc. Um, to kind of make it a more in integrative experience. Um, but again, this is something that we use with the Pan Outreach program to teach students how to play Pan without having to carry a Pan home, uh, which is especially nice when you talk about the cellos and bass pans. They're very, very cumbersome, not something that's easily transported. So this gives everybody an opportunity to practice without the cumbersome nature of carrying a pan around. And if you want to follow us, you can check us out on Facebook uh, or on Twitter, at Panhandlers Band. There's videos for, of tin cups, um, audio recordings of some of the tunes that we do, different pictures, all kinds of stuff, and of course, our performance schedule. So if you're interested in that, follow us on Facebook. Thank you for taking some time to learn a little bit more about the steel pan today. If you have any questions about anything pan related or anything you've seen here, feel free to reach out to me at panoutreach.org. That's www.panoutreach.org. And go to the staff page, you can find my email right there. And uh, no matter what instrument you play, practice hard and practice often. I appreciate all of you taking the time to watch this video and let me spread a little bit of pan love today. Uh, remember, everything's better with flams. Practice like you want to perform and have a great day.